Hi guys, that's Dorota Palitska International Nail Artisan Elki Tor here and today we are going to do some coffin shaped nails. So they are actually a little bit uh, beaten nails uh, so I will also show you how to deal with them as well. I'm starting with pushing back the cuticles and we are going to go for a really um, nice orangey corally uh, set so I'm quite excited. I also like to dehydrate the nail plate. Um, there is a little bit of the fake tan on them, so I want to make sure everything is off before I start filing, because uh, otherwise you will bring those oils uh, into the nail plate. And you can see this nail plate is quite shiny, it's a little bit um, not at the best condition, so uh, we want to make sure the nails are going to last a nice time. Then with the cuticle bead, I'm just going to file it one side. And for a change, guys, because you have requested that as well, I'm going to use the tips. Just so you could see it a different way of doing the nail extensions. Then put it back into the reverse and do the other side. You can also see it how the nail plate is changing the color on the places where I have filed it. So I really need to make it a nice, a whitish, pinkish color. Then using the file, I'm going to uh, file the free edge. Obviously there is hardly any free edge in there. Um, so I'm doing it quite slowly and carefully to don't hurt the client and then scratch the surface of the natural nail. Okay, so you can see it. There have been some product absorbed on the nails and we need to make sure everything is gone and the surface is nice and matte. Also those nails, um, they've got like a wee peak in the middle. Um, Almost, I would say, like those kind. So normally the nails have a C curve like this, like a curve. And those nails, I would say, they go like this uh, in some places. And I think that's why I have decided also for the tips as well. So we've got a little bit of challenge. Okay, so scratch it well. And I'm doing uh, each step on all the nails and then go back and do another step. This way you get consistency and some of you have wrote the comments like uh, all good but uh, I can do separate nails like nice and pretty but they all different so try to do it a one step by step so like don't do it one nail from start to finish but do one step like so I would push back cuticles on all of them file all of them paint the French all of them this way you will get guys consistency obviously for this video just to speed up I'm going to show you on those four nails at the moment um, and then catch up on the rest uh, with the cuticle uh, nipper I'm going to remove uh, the biggest excess of the cuticle but I will clean them also one more time uh, just before we um, start painting with the gel polish um, so um, so I'm not overdoing it uh, because we've got still lots of filing to do it so I push them back a little bit and then just trim them at this stage I'm only getting rid of anything which might disturb me to place a product in there After we've done that part, we can dehydrate again with the blue scrub. So dehydrate it well, wait for it to dry, 
and then apply an extra nail prep on all the nails. Okay, I'm just going to do the same on the other hand and then we can glue the tips. Okay, just to save the time, I have already done some bits and pieces so you can see it will be doing a really nice glittery set uh, and also some Aurora pigment. I'm going to dehydrate those nails, uh, put an extra nail prep just because I have been doing so much. Wait for it to dry and then we are going to apply the tips. The tips I have actually used, um, that's the pre-pinch extreme tips and I quite like it, the fact that they look like they have been sculpted. Um, so this is a really nice bonus. As you can see, the tips got like on pockets and when we apply the nails like those pockets can be quite difficult to blend. Uh, so what I'm always doing, guys, doesn't matter what tips I'm working with, I'm trimming those pockets, one side and other side, just like this. And I show you one more as well, so quite often I use these tips in a salon as well. And they are a full pocket uh, tips, so I would trim them as well, like especially when we're applying it on such as uh, tiny nails, if you put it like this, they are not going to last well, so I'm cutting like there. And then I might cut even the corners off and then they are uh, okay to go. For a biting nails, like where there is almost no nail, uh, I would do it this way. So only one third of the tip is covering the nail. Basically, when we scoop the nails, the gel is almost flying in the air, like, you know, when we remove the form. So we don't need those tips at all. Like the less pocket you've got, the better. So this is a, a nice tip for you guys as well. And the glue I'm using is a Nail Perfect brush on glue. Um, don't flood the um, don't flood the um, uh, pocket with the glue. I'm always going like one side, other side, uh, and then I'm just um, holding the hand. Usually, when the nails are biting, the skin can be even there. So I'm pulling the skin down with my finger, then go there, feel the click of the pocket, and then press the tip down. Once you hold, um, press it down. Like if someone has lots of skin, you can also ask client to lift the hand up a little bit. That will help you to. Uh, to secure the tips too. And then obviously I'm counting to 20, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, that's the first one on. And then I'm going to apply the next one. Before you cut the tips, uh, like the... Um, uh, for a shaping, like make sure the glue bonds uh, really well. So I usually wait a couple seconds um, before I cut or um, by the time actually you finish uh, the last nail, the first one is ready for a uh, for a cut. So I'm peeling those uh, skin down the way. So the skin, because sometimes when you've got over too much skin, those skin can push away the tip, if that makes sense. Uh, so especially in a really badly biting nails, like, can you show your ring finger on the other hand? So closer, yeah. So you can see the ring finger, that's a really short nail bed. Um, and that's uh, where I have to really hold it like well because the nail bed is finishing there. Uh, so the finger was pushing on the tip. Um, this one is slightly longer, but still quite, quite short. And then another tip. So in general, application of the tips takes you the same time what the form application, I would say. And obviously you've got an extra time which you need to spend on filing them um, to the shape, but also at the same time, once you file those initial shape uh, of the of the nails um, with, on the tips, you've got less filing when you apply the product than you do on the forms because you follow already the shape which is there. Uh, so that's a bonus. Okay, that's them all attached in. Then we are going to wait a couple seconds and trim them and shape them for a gel application. Okay, I'm using the um, tip cutter. So just slide it and cut the shape and the length we want. I want them kind of decent length, but at the same time, I don't want them overly too long. Okay, so that will be a nice length. Uh, then using the file, I'm going to shape them. So first of all, I'm uh, filing the side walls. It is going to be a coffin shape, so I want them to be kind of in a triangle shape. So one side and then other side. 
do not file too long in a one place uh, you want to really uh, file it a little bit and then jump on the other side so again file a little bit and then jump on the other side okay i can also shape the free edge Pull those nail fold down so you can reach those corners there. And then we are going to just blend it on the top the entire chip. Okay, and then blend on the top. In the corners, like if you do struggle, reach it with the normal file, you could also use the cuticle bit and just go there with the cuticle bit. And this is quite helpful tip, guy. guys. And then another one. Blend at the top. For the gel we always need either a rough surface or a sticky surface so that's why I'm scratching the tips. Now so I want to have them nice uh, coffin shape so they look pretty. Uh, when you're working with the acrylic, you could probably just put the product even without of like blending only the difference on the natural nail and then without of blending the um, the entire tip uh, for the gel. As I say, I'm doing those couple scratches, but it is okay like if there are some empty spaces. I do the final check if there is any more places I want to touch up, uh, then clean the dust and then we can apply the product. So remove the dust take uh, the blue scrub because during the application we might maybe touch the nails so like clean them uh, universal air bond this ones have been blue scrubbed so universal air bond and now we can apply the product. I'm going to use this, um, actually the Neil Perfect Soft Pink for a change. Uh, in Desire Neils it comes as a Milky Pink, that's a diamond pot. Um, they're basically be, uh, the same colors. On this one we are applying a nice and thin layer on the entire nail. So those on this one, nice and thin layer on the entire nail. And same on this one. Cure it. Same in here. It's great to change. Then uh, we are going to use two glitters. We had them in a stock. Uh, I will try to get them guys for you uh, again. And the other one, I have no clue where I get it. Like probably a million years ago. I'm kidding. Maybe 10 years ago. Um, I just got somewhere and I really have no clue where. Uh, so the glitter encapsulation, I'm going to do it here. So I apply it nice and thin layer, tiny bit more where your apex area is. 
and then using some kind of old dry brush do not dip it in the glitter it has to be a dry brush uh, i'm just going to slap those glitter on first the orange one and then those coral one in those coral ones there are some different particles make sure those large ones aren't too close to the cuticle um because then they will be hard like you could overfile it uh, once i have done the glitter uh, i'm using a gel sponge and just touching it up because we have applied such a thin layer of the product uh, you don't have to worry that something will happen to it you can just touch it up to flatten change and this way you don't um, overfile the glitter because it's kind of deeper um, encapsulated inside same on this one and it drop more product there get those glitter in it looks absolutely amazing we have kind of done like a glitter ombre with it um and those oh, i love encapsulated glitter like i think it looks super fantastic I've got those large particle move it you don't want it to be at the edge of the needle change then on this needles we have to apply uh, we have to build up the apex because we are going to put some color over there so I'm just putting another thin layer and another thin layer in there and then we are going to build them pick up a scoop of the product like a really decent scoop and then just place the apex in there and work all the way down don't put too much product at the side because by the time you perfect it it is going to run in there uh, plus I saw I might want to um, reshape them a little bit more there is an air bubble which I have created in there and I cannot play too long with it because then the gel will run too much so if something like this happen just leave it alone if you cannot fix it quickly okay that's me happy change apply nice and thin layer here oh this one is finished pick up the scoop of the product and build up the apex there So one side, other side. Change. And then we have to do it exactly the same on the index finger here. So nice and thin layer. I like to apply this nice and thin layer as well because the gel slides over the... It's make it more easy to move. Uh, and also I've got a nice and thin around the cuticle area. Okay, so those apex in, and then we working one side, other side, one side, other side. Again, don't go too much to the sides because we are going to taper it a little bit more when we shape it. Check the side view and then that's me happy with it so we can cure it. Okay, in the meantime when the hands clear uh, cure i'm going to quickly uh, close all the products uh, try to always keep your desk nice and clean <clears throat> it just makes your life easier okay that's uh, that's it cured so i can remove the inhibition oh we have to encapsulate the glitter gosh oh my goodness i'm terrible <laughs> so for a glitter encapsulation i have rushed it for a glitter encapsulation i'm using a crystal one and i like the crystal one because it is um really <clears throat> watery gel uh, so i find it like i've got less shaping to do it uh, after it like it's it's really watery the first layer of the clear is like a really strongly brushed brushed in if there is any loose particles of the glitter i'm just going to scoop them away now change do the same in here so get those loose particles of the glitter and then apply nice and thin layer and then we can build up the apex so pick up the scoop and this one you have to work extremely fast like because it's a water gel change 
check it if there is any other Pisces you want to fix it. Change. So this one sells levels even more than the fiber gels. Um, another scoop. Check the side view and cure and the crystal one cures in 30 seconds uh, so I've got my hand almost ready and then we can start shaping them and putting the color and of course Aurora pigment I cannot really wait so this hand has cured remove the inhibition a layer I will actually show you on those uh, hand because you have seen the glitter encapsulation um, and then we will just do those Aurora uh, once and then that's that's this set finished. So I'm filing again one side, other side, shorten the free edge. Like check if it's all good. Blend around the cuticle area. So the filing technique is exactly the same like I'm using uh, for the form applications. Um, and then they they look kind of all nice. And follow this shaping technique uh, will make your nails look more uniform. Blended everything from the top. And that's basically um, nicely shaped already, um, so I don't have to do any more with this nail. Do the same in here, so one side, other side, one side, other side. You can see it by filing only the sides, the shape has improved uh, drastically. Um, file the free edge and it looks quite decent already. Of course, we have to again blend everything around the cuticle area so when the nails grow, you don't see the growth. There is no bumps in there. Um, it's also preventing the lifting too. Okay, smooth it out from the top. Just the entire nail. the shape and then using the buffer we are going just to smooth them and then they're ready for a painting Okay, that's the whole fight on shape. Before I start painting with the gel polish, um, I'm giving like a final look if there is any other places I would love to touch up. So um, I might just go with the cuticle nipper and like touch one or two more places. Obviously don't overdo it. Like uh, um, we don't want to cause the scarring tissue um, and we don't want to uh, cause overgrowth of the cuticles because we have just removed uh, too much of the tissue. But this is a time when I'm doing the second round. And I find it is quite um, great. So first of all, we are not overexposing the clients to the products because uh, we've, we've got obviously inhibition layers with the gel polishes. Uh, we also, uh, with the gel, we also keep filing. And you know, uh, the file is like um, microdermabrasion for the skin. Uh, so sometimes after the filing, we don't necessarily even need to trim the cuticles second time. Um, that's why I'm doing it in two stages. Uh, blue scrap to remove any dirty bits and pieces. Um, like so there is no dust particles. Um, it will make your life much more difficult if you don't do it. Uh, because uh, the gel polish can get stuck in there. 
then the color which we will use is a 234 that's the epiphany orange uh, and it's a really beautiful and i thought it will look absolutely amazing um um with with this set of the nails and of course oh i've got something in there and of course we are going to do aurora uh, pigment over it It looks also awesome with such a tan hands. Uh, I had it on my nails this color and I really loved it. It, uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm really curious how it will look with Aurora over it. Um, isn't this color beautiful? <laughs> yeah, that's really, really nice. And then once you're happy, let's cure it. So inside, we are going to do exactly the same in here, but also straight away I will put those top coat over it. Um, so on the glitter one, I'm going to use, actually I'm going to try this one as it's going to work for Aurora, uh, because normally I use those high shine no wipe top coat. Um, and this one is a block the UV one. So you can see it once we put it over the glitter, and the glitter pops out and we've got a beautiful ombre in there. I love how soft and like and um, at the same like quite uh, quite soft but really sparkly those colors look together. Okay, apply the second layer in there. This is the first layer on the second set of the nails. Okay, second layer over them. Try to be quite uh, smooth working with the, that's the stand up one. Um, try to be quite smooth working with the color before applying the Aurora pigment because any kind of chromes guys show imperfections like a lot. So if you are gonna do a chrome, uh, make sure you give it like even an extra buff to the nails otherwise it will look really disgusting uh, so um, keep that in mind like when doing chromes and I am I cannot really wait to see it how the Aurora is going to look on this color uh, like I, I really cannot wait That's so beautiful, those glitter nails. And you can see there is a wee star in there and there is uh, some different shapes change. So I'm go what I'm gonna do is, so that's Aurora pigment. And what I'm gonna do before I apply the top coat, because I didn't use it on, on this top, um, I need to do a test. Uh, so Aurora, um, you get like, it looks like it's little in there, but that's last you um, ages. So what I'm going to do it, I have cured this nail and I have applied it there. What I'm going to do it is I will see if the Aurora will work on it. It does. Okay, it does. It does work on it. I can easily wipe it off. Actually, it looks quite nice as well like this, uh, but I will wipe it off. Um, let's put the second coat in there. Thank you, that's the lighter one. Okay, and then on this one. This color also looks amazing with white. Perfect change.
sorry guys, I have to also run the shop in here as well. Okay, so it did work. So I'm going to apply thin layer of the top coat and be fast, see how you apply the top coat as well. Because this is how your Aurora is going to go. You also have to really count the curing time. Uh, if you don't, the chrome might not stick in well. So I'm going to cure exactly 60 seconds. I've got dust particle in there, so I'm just brushing it away. Otherwise, it will show in chrome. Always, always very fussy when it comes to the chromes. Okay, check those light reflections. Perfect change. Put it like nicely inside, fill it in. Perfect. And then I can do that in here as well. I have been applying Aurora a lot on the pink colors and it looks fantastic. I have never done it on this color, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm glad to know that the chrome works on this top coat as well. Uh, not all the top coats are working for chromes. Uh, so like always make sure you cure it right time. And not all chromes would go into inhibition, like no, all chromes goes into inhibition layer, but some powders like pigments goes into, um, sorry, most of the chromes goes into no wipe top gels and um, some pigments and mermine powders, they go on top of the inhibition layer. Perfect, change your hand. I'm going to also try it like, perfect. I also watch how the client hold the hand inside because sometimes depending on the position, they might not... Uh, Put it properly. I prefer the finger application. Oh wow. I love that. Now my question is, do we keep one like this or we keep both of them? Both is so sparkly. Do both. What do you think? I don't yeah? mind. I you don't mind? mind. <laughs> See, I love those type of clients. They just say, <laughs> slap it on wherever you want. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. No, you can't go, guys, you can't go wrong with Aurora pigment. Like, I think it's just amazing. Okay, with my fingers, like, I'm kind of also... Um, buffing the excess of the chrome i wanted it to be nice and chromey what else you could do it to make your chrome last give it either a couple scratches to the free edge because what we are have done is we have applied the top coat which is shiny uh almost like almost like a mirror and then we are going to apply another top coat it wouldn't stick into it that's why the chromes can come off and then apply the top coat like a decent amount of the top coat going in there and on this one too they're so pretty I love this color. Like, actually, Olivia could do my toes this color as well, change. I would love it for a summer. Yeah, I think with Aurora, it goes more. Um, everything goes more together. Keep rubbing, like, until you, you've got a really nice surface and you're happy with it. And of course, we will have to clean those fingers where I was testing if the uh, if the top coat is going to work for this type of chrome. Free edge, remember, the free edge is not only at there. That's your free edge as well. Um, and also, I show you how I cap the free edge um, when applying the top coat. Because when I do it at quick, you cannot see it sometimes. This is my capping free edge moment. Look what the brush does. That's my free edge capped on the one side and half of the front. And this is my free edge capped uh, on the other side. And then I'm just perfecting the middle. Okay, so I'm always kind of starting with the sides first because the sides are more important. Because we always forget about those sides. Cap the free edge. And then the decent amount of the top coat change. And that's the set finish. So I have to clean it at, uh, all nice uh, so it looks pretty. Uh, and I cannot wait it to to do a, a thumbnail picture for you guys of those uh, beautiful uh, nails. And 
I'm going to use the UV cleanser to remove those Aurora pigment which we have put it on this nail. Once we take the baby wipes um, and we clean all the dust particles and all the mess which we have created dehydrating those nails and the skin around um, things will look always much much prettier then apply the cuticle oil when i'm taking the pictures guys um, i do remove any cuticle oil which is excessive so any excessive cuticle oil uh, any oil from the nails itself i do always wipe it off uh, because it doesn't look nice on the picture so remember that i hope you have really enjoyed this um, video with a nice blink i'm sending you glittery hugs and bye for now oh.